Hello, geometry students. Welcome to video lesson 3.2.2 about using flowcharts um, as a tool to prove uh, certain things in geometry class. In particular, today we're talking about similar triangles because uh, in the previous lesson, um, we talked about a couple of shortcuts that help us prove or convince ourselves that triangles have to be similar um, based on less information than would normally be required, right? For shapes to be similar, normally you need all angles to be congruent and all side lengths to be proportional. But uh, we talked about the angle-angle similarity shortcut, allowing us to convince ourselves triangles are similar just based on two angles. And the side-angle-side similarity shortcut, allowing us to convince ourselves just based on two sides being proportional and the angle between them being congruent. So we're going to continue kind of those ideas today. But we're going to organize our thoughts and we're going to get a little bit more formal um, with our justifications of things um, using flowchart diagrams. So the first question in this section gives us these two triangles here, ABC and TPQ. And uh, it asks us this question, are these two triangles similar? Use full sentences to explain your reasoning. Um, and the answer, hopefully you can see just by looking, is yes. These two triangles are similar because angle A is congruent to T and B is congruent to P, which means uh, you know we can use the angle-angle similarity shortcut um, to prove the triangles are similar. So if I were answering this question, I would say yes, since angle A is congruent to, or I could say A equals angle T and angle B equals angle P, ABC, right? Triangle ABC is similar to triangle TPQ by the angle-angle similarity shortcut, right? So uh, I should check and make sure that my similarity statement here has the right letters, but I think A is congruent to T, right? A, A is congruent to T, B is with P, and C is with Q. So that's good. So here's a full sentence that justifies how I know these two triangles are similar, um, just based on the information that's given to me in the picture, right? So this is a wonderful justification. It's a wonderful proof, if you will, that, that convinces anybody, um, right? As long as they are familiar with the angle-angle similarity shortcut, um, that, that this must be true. Okay. So, uh, this type of reasoning, instead of writing it out in a full sentence, what we're going to do today is just look at it, uh, kind of in a more visual or graphically organized kind of manner. Okay. So, uh, here we're introduced to, um, uh, Julio decides to use a diagram called a flow chart to explain his reasoning. Okay. Compare your explanation to Julio's flowchart. Did he use the same reasoning we did? Well, here's what I see in his flowchart. He has a bubble here, which says the measure of angle uh, A is equal to the measure of angle T, right? That's right here. So A is equal to T. Well, I said that up here. Measure of angle A is equal to measure of angle T. And then over here, he has another bubble that says measure of angle B is equal to the measure of angle P, which is what I had. And then he says down here, triangle CAB is similar to triangle QTP. Now, those names are not exactly what I had, but is his naming okay? Well, let's see. A is in the middle. T is in the middle. B is on the right. P is on the right. And then C and Q are the first letters. So I think his is okay. He just wrote his names in a different order um, than I did in, when he named his triangles, which is fine. And then you'll notice right down here, he has his reasoning, right? His justification. So um, this should uh, sort of remind you of claim evidence reasoning, right? We're making a claim that, yes, these triangles are similar. My evidence is these two congruent angles. My reasoning is the angle-angle similarity shortcut. So, um, you know, because the angle-angle similarity shortcut says if two angles of one are congruent to two angles of another, the triangles must be similar. Uh, that justifies my claim, right? 
So did Julio use the same reasoning as us? Yes, absolutely. He just organized his uh, his reasoning, his his proof, essentially, into what we call a flow chart. Okay, and a flow chart, uh, by definition, if you want to write this down, is a diagram that shows a logical train of reasoning from given facts to logical conclusions. And one thing I might add here is it shows that using bubbles and arrows, okay? It's typically how we see it done. Bubbles and arrows make up a flowchart diagram, okay? So uh, if we look at another example, uh, we'll just look at a couple more. Here is another couple of triangles that we're going to try to show are similar to each other, okay, based on the information that we are given in the diagram, right? So we have triangle CDF and triangle RTQ, um, and I need, I think in this case, three pieces of information to show they're similar, okay? Number one is that uh, one pair of angles is congruent. Hopefully you can see the markings there that tell me, uh, that tell me angle C is equal to angle R, right? So my, my, uh, let's see, I can probably make my angle symbol here. Angle C is equal to angle R, right? Is really how we should be writing that, angle R. So uh, angle C is equal to angle R or congruent to angle R, right? It's equal in measure. C and R here. Um, that's the only pair of angles I have though. So I want you to notice here that I do not know if angle T is the same as D, though they look like they might be, and Q and F look like they might be, but I don't know that for sure either. So I have to use maybe not the angle angle similarity shortcut, but instead the side angle side similarity shortcut, because I do have some sides marked here, three and two, eight and 12, right? So there's a couple of different ways you can do this. But essentially what you need to show is that those two, uh, the corresponding sides here are proportional, right? Or they make the same ratio. Um, so here's, here's probably what we would do. So in this bubble here, I would probably write something like uh, TR divided by uh, DC equals four. Hopefully you're all in agreement with that because TR is 12 and DC is three. So 12 divided by three is four, right? But the good news is I can basically just copy that over into this bubble and I can write exactly the same thing about RQ divided by CF, right? That would be eight divided by two. So TR over DC is four, RQ over CF is four. So the fact that this side, this side here, uh, whoops, this side here divided by, divided by this side over here, 12 divided by three, eight divided by two, they make equal ratios, right? So I can actually make myself uh, one more little bubble here. And I can say, that these two side lengths are proportional. So I would probably write that as TR over DC is equal to RQ over CF, right? So that's what I would put there, okay? And then that means two of my sides are proportional and angle C is congruent to angle R, which is the angle between them. So all of this kind of works together to show what I want to show. So those two bubbles make this bubble true. And then this bubble along with this bubble make uh, what I want to be uh, true in the end, right? I wanna say that triangle CDF is similar to triangle R, T, Q, right? And again, you can kind of check check our, our letters are in the proper order there, but they definitely are. So my triangles are similar. Now I need to justify a couple of things, okay? 
This top line, I typically don't need to justify. This was given to me in the picture. This was just simple division, division, right? Um, for this bubble, what I might say is uh, proportional means equal ratios. So that's kind of my reasoning there, right? As I can say that, and I'll make it much smaller. Proportional means equal ratios. So that's what I'll put there. And then down here, I will simply write side angle side similarity. Shortcut. Whoops, short cute. Ha, <laughs> shortcut. So I have that and I have that. So that is a very good and fully completed flow chart proof, okay? Flow chart uh, diagram that proves these two triangles are similar to each other, okay? Now, again, this is the work we have already been doing. We're just organizing it in a bit more formal way today, right? We're saying what we what we knew to begin with. We're, we're following a logical train of reasoning, right? From the given facts, the things we see in the picture, to the conclusion that we want to draw, all right? Now, one final example for you here. And this one um, requires a little bit, a little bit, maybe more thought, or there's a couple ways to make a flow chart that would do this, right? So we have two more um, triangles here in problem 61. They're asking, are these triangles similar? You know, ACT and uh, GPI, right? Are these two triangles similar? Justify your conclusion using a flow chart, okay? So I want you to notice that I do have some side lengths. Yes, I have some side lengths here. Um, I also have some angle measures, right? So like I know this uh, side length here is six. Here GI is six. And I know uh, GP is 12. And I know PI is 15, right? So um, we can do all of those. And then over here, I know that AT is four and uh, AC is eight. However, I think the easiest way to um, to show that these two triangles are similar is actually to use angle angle similarity because I'm given some angles in these triangles. I, I, I typically want to use that because just the proof and the, the writing out of the ratios of 12 divided by eight or six divided by four or whatever it is um, just makes it a little bit more work for me. Certainly it's a, it's a wonderful way to prove triangles are similar, but if we have angle measures, I think that typically is easier. So if you want to, um, you could pause the video right here and you could try to uh, make a flow chart yourself of this particular uh, situation, proving that these two triangles are similar um, and then come on back and then I will prove it here for you. So my first uh, bubble would be, uh, would probably say something like, Angle C is equal to angle P. That's what we see in the picture, I believe, um, that angle C is equal to angle P. And again, I can put in my angle symbol, uh, maybe. Yeah, I can do angle C is equal to angle P. Yeah, so that's definitely true because they're both 56.5. That's given in the, in the picture. Now, uh, the other congruent angles are actually not necessarily given to me, but I'm hoping that they are, uh, congruent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to find the measure of angle T. Okay. I'm going to try to find the measure of angle T right here. And to do it, I'm going to use the triangle angle sum theorem. Okay. So I'm actually going to make another oval another bubble over here that's fairly big. And I'm going to say the following. I'm going to say angle C plus angle A plus angle T has to be equal to 180 degrees. Okay, so I'm going to say that. So angle C plus angle A plus angle T has to be 180 degrees, okay?
But now because angle A and angle C, I already know, I can just do math, okay? So I'm gonna make another bubble right down here, uh, right down here, that says, that says the measure of angle T, measure of angle T is, and then I'm gonna figure out what it is, okay? So the measure of angle T is what? Well, I know that 56.5 plus 101.2, that's 157.7, right? So then 180 minus 157.7 is 22.3, okay? So that math work right there is how I went from knowing angle C and angle A to knowing uh, angle T, right? Using the, again, triangle angle sum theorem. So here, measure of angle T, 22.3 degrees, okay? So I'll just make myself a little angle symbol there, and then, uh, then I think I'll be ready to kind of finish my proof off. So I need, I think, one more bubble to get me another one that looks kind of like this, right? I have C is equal to P, but now I think I can make another bubble that says, that's going to say angle T is equal to angle I, right? Angle T is equal to angle I. And then one final bubble down below is going to tell me what I want because I now, I believe, have the angle-angle similarity shortcut. So I'm going to say triangle ACT is similar to triangle G uh, PI. Okay, so I have that. Now I'm going to put in some arrows here. And hopefully we can follow my logical train of reasoning here. Right? So that's my flow chart, but I do need to justify a couple of things. Okay, so whenever you're justifying things, think about, did you use a theorem? Did you use a property or anything like that? Did you use a shortcut? I think the things I need to justify are down here, of course, I use the angle-angle similarity shortcut as I did previously. So for my last bubble, that's what I would put right down there is the angle-angle similarity shortcut. Okay, so that's that. And then I think this top bubble is actually the other thing I need to justify. And how did I know that angle C plus angle A plus angle T was equal to 180 degrees? That was the triangle angle sum theorem. Okay, triangle angle sum theorem. And again, I will make it smaller so you can see it a little bit better. And by a little bit better, I mean a lot better. Okay, so triangle angle sum theorem is what told me that. Okay, then to get to this bubble is just math. Then to get to this bubble, um, I guess we could say um, congruent angles have equal measure you want that would be a good way to say that and then i think we have fully justified everything that we wanted to justify right so this is a flow chart proof that gets me from a a visual diagram that i'm given to a logical conclusion all right so again flow charts are meant to show the logical progression of your thoughts this is essentially you putting your thoughts onto paper okay now you have some review and preview to do and we'll continue these uh flow charts um, when we when we uh get back together so uh that's all i got for you thanks for being with me and have a good day